roustabout Shifting from town to town No job can hold him down He's just a knock around guy oh. Thanks for holding my hand during this piss Oh man, don't worry dude, this is what friends are for man Hey, this is Jason Rouse, everybody, and uh, welcome to the Safe Word Podcast on a uh, sunny uh, Wednesday morning, hump day nonetheless. Going to take a little walk around the uh, local lake, Lady Bird Lake, which is, uh, you can't swim in it. Oh, just got my leg ran over by a cement truck. And um, there's bat poo in the water, so you can't swim in it. But enough about shit. Uh, my guest on the, the uh, roustabout here, uh, Sonny, is, I want to say Callan, but it's not. Yeah, it's uh, Sonny Carlin. Carlin, yes. And uh, no related. forgettable last name. Comedian, yet far from the talent of George Carlin. Oh, extremely far. Away. Yeah, you're not even close. I'm not even being mean, but you know your place. I do, I do, I do know my place. I'm exceptionally lucky to even be like in your presence, Mr. Rouse. <laughs> <laughs> it's fantastic. See? Play your position, everybody. Um, you're Texan. Yeah, I'm uh, one of the only people in Austin that is actually from Texas doing comedy in Austin. It's weird. Is that why it's um, it's been going so poorly? Um, I can't really say for certain because, like, I mean, I've only been doing this for like nine months at this point. Nine That's months, tough. so you're like just birthing. Oh yeah, I'm like in this fetal state. It's uh, it's like being almost thirty, but like yeah, you being still a baby. You're into the you're in the world, yet your umbilical cord is still tied off. Oh yeah, and I've been very fortunate. Speaking of umbilical cords, didn't you strangle your sister? Uh, no, that was actually uh, the opposite. Like my twin, I have a twin sister. And she, uh, she actually did like a double homicide attempt, like double murder. Uh, almost got away with it whenever we were born. Her umbilical cord was wrapped around my head, so that's why, like, why, my, why my head is so big. But uh, yeah, you like, you wear a thirty six hat. Yeah, like most snapbacks, like I'm usually on the last button, and if I get a haircut, I could probably fit too. Well, let's look. look. You're not like the freak in the family. You've clearly inherited your head, right now. Who, when you look through the family albums and you're doing a head measure, who's like, oh, I got great-great-grandma's head. She's got a huge noggin on her. Well, uh, I come from a family of really big-headed people. Are they Irish? Maybe? Yeah. yeah. Oh, super Irish. My yeah, a lot of my Irish, Irish friends have massive heads. Yeah. It's like, I think Shout it's out to uh, Martin O'Brien. It's definitely potatoes, though. Like, I but don't, don't look like they have the neck to support the head. That like is the a- body's always emaciated from like potato famine, and then you've got this inflated, alcoholic face. Like you know, look, I know just immediately. You didn't have to tell me. You go, oh, I haven't had anything to drink in a while, and I go, yeah, because you don't look Korean because your face is so bloated. Oh yeah, your head looked like a dead elk. I know it's like those old pictures of you, like whenever you're. you're All right, like, let's not bring <laughs> me into it. <laughs> Oh, no, no. I have a pip- picture I save on my phone of laying on a couch when I'd first moved to L.A. or shortly after and with no shirt on. And I'm just fuck blown, like just slobbed out, got nine chins, just doughy, you know, and, I, and that was the, I uh, you know, the Irish part of my family, like the gross white, like white guy with a huge gut and no ass. Yeah. It's uh, they're easy kids to watch though, the Irish, because they have those big heads from birth, so their little bodies just run around in circles around it. But they're also very easily captured. Do you Irish. think that the Irish Catholic priests looked at the top of an Irish boy's head as just more of a place to come? Oh, of course. Like that's basically. Is your head kind of flat on top. No, I have a full head of hair because of all the protein from because I was raised Catholic and you know. Was there allegations of uh? Misconduct in your uh, local worship place? 
Uh, not that I know of specifically, and um, I was actually very disappointed because I felt I was a pretty attracted child, and yeah, that's a running joke. Is you know, my brother actually did a joke about my brother did stand up for a short time. Yeah, he's twelve years younger, and he he him is a, used to open for me in colleges and universities. He's like fifteen. Yeah, is he uh, is he like way worse than you, or is not even not completely different people? Yeah. Yeah. Is he like is he like the opposite where it's like, you know, he's almost the opposite. Like he's he's very like clean or anything like that or does does he have a thing for piss shit and blood like you? No, no one does. That's an acquired taste. Yeah, that's always like very shocking about you cuz it's like you 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 seem so depraved but you're like surprisingly wholesome. I I have my yin and my yang because there's so much extremes that I like in my life like my home life as you can see it's very organized quiet for the most part and uh, when I go out into the world now I'm in the your soup and I need the piss the your soup what is that like the world society's soup the world I, I I'm in the world yeah so uh, most people and things are just not pleasant so you take a shit on the floor, and people start to pay attention to what you're saying. I know it's like that does stop everything because it's like, you know, why is that? That's why I think homeless people are so interesting, like especially downtown on Sixth Street. Like you Those see, they're called open micers. <laughs> now I'm talking about the great unwashed, not the not the, the not the homeless. Mm. Yeah, I'm not the, uh, the, the great unwashed. <laughs> that's what you call open micers. <laughs> yeah, that's them. <laughs> <laughs> You guys all look, and when I say you guys, I'm talking uh, comics that live in Austin, that have been doing comedy under three years, uh, all look and smell the same. Yeah, like, You guys all look like you like, live in the same warehouse together. I, uh, what, what's the smell like? Because it's like, I've noticed it kind of smells like uh, the back of a van whenever you lived in it for three months. There's like, flavors. There's the, the, the person that's just, like you talked about, the unwashed. There's some guys there that just look greasy. They look like the weather. Yeah, it's like they're not ready to actually be on a show. Cause it's like, they're like, not actually ready to be in life. Yeah, it's like the, you have to have like some sort of like class to you in a sense. Where it's like, you know, like even like, like even you, you're always look, put together. If you can't get a job... Uh, with the health standards of McDonald's or any fast food, you know, job. But, oh, God, I just puked. <laughs> oh. Yo, McDonald's is, like, the mo is very, very economical in the, in the sense. Like, if you got $5, like, McDonald's got you. Well, that's their whole, look at, first of all, that's their whole strategy is to convince you to go, that you're getting a deal. The deal is. Oh, we're getting chased. Oh, no, it's just a runner. The deal is. That you're gonna be sick to your stomach after you eat your deal. Yeah, I mean that's life, you know. It's Just like, because it's on sale, it doesn't mean it's good for you. It'll keep you alive, you know. It's not. It's not. I. I, I don't. I've never heard McDonald's like make a spokesperson thing. Yeah, but what life are you living? Life. This is the thing, right? <clears throat> you want to. Uh, it's keeping you alive. But what what quality of life would you have if you're sick? from the food you're eating and suffering from malnutrition and eating empty, empty calories that are just making you, give you headaches, sweat, yeah. cancer, impotency, anything that you see on a cigarette package, you can pretty much count on from a McDonald's <laughs> meal. You know, something I, I've, I've also noticed like about cigarettes, like do they have, they have different warnings depending on country, right? Not to, not to mention, uh, this gentleman has a full setup. You can't see this, uh, but uh, he's built a house here. Bro, he's got a fucking foundation. Yeah. Fuck? Yeah. No, there's a place in me. There's uh, people literally. Those look like forts we would build when we were a kid. Well, those, that's Austin housing. Yeah. There's like a whole like on Riverside. There's this whole uh, like civilization just chilling mm -hmm. over over there. Like, uh, and it's. It's kind of like I, I didn't really have a problem with it until my guitar got out of like disappeared out of my van, oh, and then someone yeah. stole your guitar. Yeah, it was just like uh, I also like kept it out there too, so it's like you know I was just basically Fuck. asking for it. it was like I would have my uh, van parked on the side of the road while I was crashing on my buddy's couch, and uh, it's on the side of the road right there on um, Frontier Valley. Well, these are any instrument 
in a, a vehicle in the a, trunk an idiot <laughs> no but you should know haven't you been robbed uh see i grew up in, yeah. a, in a city full of thieves well no one's ever like ran up to me and said give me your shit or i'll hurt you um okay. or something like that no, no one's, one's broken it. into your locker at school and dumped out a a litter box full of cat shit and no. stole all your shirts. Well, the first time I ever like experienced anything like that was in boot camp. Just like whenever the fucking RDC would come through. And boot just, like, camp is what uh, Sonny calls his cobbler college. He was <laughs> he made boots in the summer camp. That's a very prestigious trade, sir. Speaking of prestigious, look at this gorgeous white canine. Just show ready and a, a feather duster for a tail. I am not a fan of dogs. No, really? Not really. I didn't know you were a lesbian. Yeah, totally. Lesbian in a dude's body, man. It's a uh, weird sexuality to have. Hello. I've never, I've never really, they're always just so like jumpy and stuff. Like they're always just Lesbians? Like, they're so, yeah, those those ones. They're always ready to scrap. I'm tired of it. Like, but uh, that's why I took a woman's self defense class because my sister was a giant lesbian. Your twin sister? No, my older sister. I have an oh. older sister. Is she well. straight? No, and she's, she's the beefier one? No, she the, the beefier one is the lesbian. Uh, as they are. Yeah, the the, the, the big taller one. And she, she's very beautiful. A very, very beautiful woman. What kind she's of just terrifying. dyke is your sister? Um, the one that you feel safe in her arms. Like, basically a bear. If she was a dude, she'd be a bear. Oh, so she's very kind of mothering, oh, yet yeah. uh, masculine. Yes. like fucking, She's like a father and a mother mixed into one. Huh. Yeah, speaking of a father and mother, look at that girl in the G-string on the paddle board. Is he wearing a top? Uh, yeah. I think it's a dude. Uh, no. I can't really tell. It, it's pretty pretty. It's a pretty dude. That's a very pretty dude. If it's a dude, he's a pretty dude. No. He's got a nice back. John Bon Blowjob. <laughs> it's gorgeous out here, isn't it? It's very nice. Yeah, I've lived here on and off for like five years, and I've never really walked around Lady Bird Lake at all. Yeah, I've been saving. Anytime a friend of mine or comic comes in from out of town, I slowly check out all the local stuff. Yeah. Then I can uh, cover two birds with one log. <laughs> right. I was like, what's your, uh, I mean, like, have any, like, really good restaurants or anything like that around here? Uh, you know what? Because I lived on the road so much. Dude, I almost cried when I saw my kitchen when I signed my lease. What, for this one? Yeah. Yeah, yeah why, like why, the, why, the luxury why? of cooking my own food and having control over when and what I'm eating. It sounds silly, but that's a oh, no, that's huge... Not, oh, yeah, that's, that's a huge, huge thing. thing. Let's circle back to the McDonald's thing. The reason you, I know the whole McDonald's... You're dealing with fucking... Look it, man. Three, four, six hours different. Jet lag... Uh, eating at the airport, um, you know, I'd have, to, I'd look at my tour schedule and go, oh, okay, I got to stop. I'm going to be in Sweden. I can eat at Arlandia Airport because I know they have a healthy breakfast there. Yeah. But some airports, oh, it might not be open until a certain time. So now you've got a day and a half where you haven't eaten because you've been traveling. Yeah, that's not, that's not even economical either because, like, it's oh, so no. much cheaper. You spend $20 have you ever, on groceries. Have you ever eaten at a movie theater for a week? Oh, no, that's like... That, that's what it's like, eating at a movie theater. Can I get the $17 licorice, please? Jesus Christ. Yeah, the clean like, water. A garnish of calories. But then you're also like, okay, my only protein here is these smoked almonds that were $37 for five of them, right? And... Um, I'll get a, oh, look, if they got protein bars, I'm like, oh, fuck, that's a lifesaver. Uh, ah. like, that guy's got a giant fan on the front of a driving lawnmower. And, he, and he's wearing a leaf blower on his back, too. He is. Bro, that's a, that can do to take to flight at any point. Dude, if he, you know what? That'd be a great comic book hero. Yeah, someone who's just like, Yo, I'm cleaning these streets and everything, but I feel I can do more. Yeah, but they, oh, that's the thing. That's what the public thinks, that this guy's got a special skill that he flies around on this fan. But the guy just doesn't care. So people throw rocks at him as he's flying over. Oh, and then he becomes like a supervillain, dude. That was, just a oh. village idiot, really. You gotta write this. This is... 
This is gold. Marvel, we're coming for you. We got we got a new we got a new hero for you, Marvel. DC, <laughs> if you want to buy it out. Lawnmower man. <laughs> the, the leaf blower man. Have you seen the light? I know you fuck with psychedelics. Do you ever yeah, see yeah. the movie Lawnmower Man? I did not. I know what's that about? No. Is it about lawnmowers? Uh, I forget now. It's psychedelics, <laughs> I think. Yeah, I, uh, I haven't done very many. Uh, I used to do psychedelics. Like a, it was like a smidgen of my life where I did psychedelics pretty he- like kind of heavily, but in, like in a way that it was uh, memorable. But I've never really full on just like repeatedly binged on like acid or DMT or anything like that. It's just Hey, you want, me, you want me to drop some uh, acid on your tongue? I just got pushed up against a wall one time, and this guy dropped acid on my tongue. And he's like, have fun for the next 16 hours. Yeah, that means you're fucked. Yeah, it was fun. Uh, we created a whole universe. It was great. Have you ever had a condom break while you're fucking a girl in the ass in Johannesburg? <laughs> no, but I've paid child support for the last, like, five years. Hey, maybe if you had my story, you wouldn't have that other problem. <laughs> yeah, man. The if fear I, of AIDS. If I could afford... Oh, wow. The fear of AIDS? Yeah. That, I, you know where Johannesburg is? Uh, oh, well, you're American. Sorry. Yeah, South know, Africa. Country. South Africa. Yeah, that's over by um, Russia, right? <laughs> I don't even know if you know what the shape of the country looks like. Uh, if, it's, if it's a square, then yes. Yeah, that's a state. If it's shaped like Texas, then yes. States in, can- in the U.S. are not other countries around the world. Uh, yet you would think that. Yeah, Texas is b- bigger than uh, most countries, right? Uh, you're talking to a Canadian where Canada, I think the U.S. fits into Canada almost twice. Oh, yeah. It is. Maybe at least twice. Yeah, uh, you, you're from like, are you close to the border? Like, where, where are you from? In, in, in Canada. Ah, 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 ah,
hey, this is my friend Joe. He sucked off his dad. And then we all start laughing and there's no problem. <laughs> Hi, this is Mike. He killed three kittens when we were younger, but he's cool now. I totally do that. My friend Uncle Hack, who was in town, oh, yeah. picks up some street scrag, takes her home, can't get to heart. Couldn't get a heart on her. Really? So he, had, so he had to eat her out. I like a champ. I mean, like fucking, you know, you don't just come to the show, the PA goes down, and you don't fucking just perform. It's fucking. That's fuck it. it. We'll do it live. Yeah. We'll do it. We'll do it live. You got something hard and cylindrical I could fucking use? I'm gonna get you yeah. done, woman. He said the pussy farts were so bad that her asshole hairs were tickling his eyebrows. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. He, I go, what's that? Tanning cream on your chin. He goes, it's not tanning cream, it's mud whistle. And I'm like, what's mud whistle? And he goes, that's when you push on a girl's stomach and the pussy parts are so bad that you wish they came out of her asshole. I felt like that would have been more of a Sam Walker thing. <laughs> Personally. Yeah, like, what did you think of, uh, you You saw the second wave. The first wave of comedians didn't make the cut. The second wave came out shining. Yeah, out, came from a different country. Right? Uh, they're West Coast. Uh, yeah, yeah. It, was, it was great. Uncle Hack, Sam room. Walker, yeah. and uh, oh yeah, yeah, we did have a great. That was look, a, that was fun. Look at first of all that show was uh, look great room. Guys run a tight ship. Yeah. Staff were super nice. Super. Green room. People were that came. The numbers were light. Most of the seats were full, but I wanted to. I think it was deserving of packed. Yeah. Because everybody was so good. Yeah, it was like, especially like the main room. Like the that main room's really great because it's all. Uh, you got to um, put a lot of ass in those seats. I went over there and saw a tinfoil hat. Um, Tripoli was there. Yeah. And uh, I was like, oh, this has a lot of potential, but because it's a sports bar, you got you need a good hundred people in there to make it turn it officially into a comedy club. The other room, watch yourself. Uh, Thirty people. To 100 is, is is a great show. The room was half the size and a lot easier to work with. But um, yeah, man, those uh, the Canadians are very um, underrated and overlooked. Probably not even uh, underrated, just unrated and overlooked. Yeah, they're very funny. Yeah, I thought it was like so funny that like when I opened up the show, Hack's been on stage 15 times. Really? Yeah. Just 15 times? Just 15 times. No shit. So Adam, lucky, running the filthy show over at the creek, hands me the lineup. And I'm like fourth last, and Hack is uh, dead last. And um, he looks at it and says, is this a joke? And I said, well, now that I think of it, it is kind of funny. You've, you haven't even got a month of comedy under your belt, and you're closing out a show full of murderers. And that was at the creek? Yeah. No shit, man. That's fucking dope. And he, he did it. What a he, horrible he, mismanagement. He, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but, <laughs> but it's good. I, you know, I'm tired of going on at the end. Yeah. Especially with all the fucking claim jumpers strong arm their way onto the lineups. And then the show goes another half hour longer till I get on. It's the worst. Yeah, I've never, uh, I've never had the, uh, never headlined a show before. I, I doubt I have the material for it. But uh, look, an hour. That's it. You know, there's people here that are working comics that don't have funny five minutes. Yeah, I, I, I see that a lot. Where it's like, there's, there's people that like. It kind of, it's, I'm happy for him, but it also, like, surprises me where I'm like, oh, like, you got that opportunity? That's pretty cool. I think they yield to us. Oh, no, they just elbowed their way into yeah. an op. They made the person, other person think that they needed them in their kitchen. Oh, by the way, that yield to us comment was, uh, was for a car that was, like, thought we were going to hit us. The comics don't yield to me in any way. I don't, I don't want to put that out there. You should just start slapping women in the face at open mics. Should I? And you you can call, change your name to like Billy Bob Bitch Slap. 
Billy Bob bitch slap here to fucking tell some jokes and slap bitches, and I'm not feeling funny. And then you come out with a cup in your hand going, this is going to be a hot show, and then you throw a coffee right in the front row. Bro. Blast them. That's a winning act, and I just rinse, wash, repeat for like two hours. It's like Vegas. We run back to the, to the right, slap a bitch, and go over there, get some coffee from the back, run to the stage, throw it in some dude's face, then rinse, wash, repeat, cash in the money. So I'm going to hit record now. <laughs> oh, no problem. Okay, cool. Okay. Hi, my name is Sonny, and I'm, I'm an alcohol. Oh, sorry. Uh, can we Have start that over? Have you been to an AA meeting? Yeah, I was actually raised around AA meetings my whole life. Ah. It was, uh, I was like that little kid that was running around in the bag. My mom's like four that, five years sober. I was like Stanhope. Yeah, pretty much. Same deal. He was in the A. Not as funny. <laughs> you know, not as funny as Stanhope. I don't think. Not as depraved, certainly. But you know, give me a, give me a few years of just. See all stuff. these road stories you hear about guys, your senior. They're all dated. No one. We're not doing anything anymore now. We're, our hearts are too close to the fence. We're walking over the uh, Colorado River, right? Yeah, that's the Colorado right here. It's pretty nice. And you can see the downtown. That's a beautiful shot right here. It's totally cool because you got the river on one side and then downtown. And as you can see, they've widened the sidewalks right up here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they, they, they really should put more, uh, put more lanes in this. Uh, There's, it's like on yeah. the river side, they, uh, they put that strictly bus lane that I just love to... Yes, yeah, this bridge is, hasn't been updated in about 30 years. Yeah, there's like cracks in this thing. There's, I think the spray paint is holding it together. Actually, you look at as if somebody who's traveled and country to country, their safety codes vary. And the amount of elevators, bridges, uh, airplanes, things I've gotten in where I'm looking around going, what the fuck is this? Is that bubble gum holding the handle on? You know. You don't want to see aviation maintenance in the Navy. America uh, is on point. Look at these cranes down here fighting for fish. There's, I don't know, 20 of them? You ever seen those videos of, like, birds killing each other? Like, there was, like, these pigeons in New York, and they fucking, like, pushed, I don't know if it's pigeons or fucking crows or whatever, but it was, like, fucking, crows. Uh, they, they pushed another fucking bird into the, under the tracks as the train was coming. It was, like, they literally just murdered somebody. So that's population control. Yeah, I mean, it's like fucking just to see it from them. And like, I, I wonder if they have, like, you know, issues like that. Or it's like, is that a problem? Is that, a, like... Yeah, there's probably... Look, it's like gangs in New York for rodents. Territories, ranges. It's no different than any prison. So if you can see that there's more babies being born on the other side of the fence, you know it's inevitably you're going to get pushed out of the equation and you want to continue your... Like, everybody wants to have a baby and make it do the things they couldn't. Exactly. Yeah. But rats continue, continue the genes. Rats are just cranking it, dumping fucking rodents onto this, eating another one's head and pushing out guts and fetal rat babies well, we're, are we're just... one airplane crash away from And then a bird other. comes in and starts to fucking eat the baby rats and then the cockroaches come and fucking feed on the baby rats corpse or what's all left? of it all of it and then the the uh, song hurt starts to play by nine inch nails i hate these assholes can you hit that button anybody all right we're gonna die oh my god we're gonna die we're going to die crossing this road. Oh, God. Okay, we're good. We're good. I saw a guy get hit by a car on Melrose Avenue one day. Yeah? I, I was... Did he at, go under it, or, or, like, did he corkscrew off the top? Dude, it looked like John Wick. The guy was awesome, actually. He was drunk enough that he wasn't stiff when he got hit. And um, young and athletic enough that when he belly flopped... I'm When I say belly flop, he landed horizontally, almost like a pancake, um, behind the car. So, holding his phone, crossing Melrose Avenue, 
right in front of Law Laws. I was standing in front of a place called The Parlor, which on Tuesday nights was the spot in Hollywood for like about four years. And I, it was just like Melrose Avenue, what you'd think. It was all the shitheads from Hollywood would show up uh, and, and judge comedy. And um, that's when I started scat chatting, actually, because of, <laughs> because oh of Chris D'Elia, oddly enough. What, Chris D'Elia got you uh, into scat chat? Well, did he groom you? No, well, this is he doesn't even know about this. But <laughs> what happened was, is the parlor on these Tuesday nights with this trendy Hollywood comedy show with a lot of stars. Chris Rock was in there working on his Oscar speech for a couple of days. Long story short, I'm kind of looking at the lineup going, wow, this is before the store had kind of become what it was a few years ago. And seeing, oh, Bill Burr, Chris Rock, Russell Peters, blah, 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 blah. And then a bunch of people who j just walked into this place for free. And they're seeing a $500 comedy show. The Lee is on. And this girl's, as they do, Snapchat Chris. And he's like, what, what is that? And she's like, Snapchat. And I'm like, no. I'm panicked now because I'm still hoping my space is coming back. You know, <laughs> so I, I, I realized she explained the video thing and that I'm like, damn it. Now I've got another social media platform that I'm going to have to feed now to stay relevant in the entertainment industry enough to get people to come to live shows, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Yeah, I got to revamp that set. Now I'm now I got to retool everything and feed it into the how does this thing work? And I as I'm fiddling with it. And I knew friends of mine in Europe had huge successes in it. Like, we're selling out concert theaters via the fan base and selling tickets from Snapchat. First time, Iceland. They're like, you have to promote the show on Snapchat. And I'm like, the only show I promote on Snapchat is Scat Chat. What is this Scat Chat? No, I can't tell you, sir. Um, so I started to see the phone started to be more of an issue because of these media platforms that were pandering to people catching things randomly and doing whatever it was kramer for instance somebody had their phone out filmed that anyway it was becoming phones were becoming progressively more annoying and live gigs how many youtube videos you've seen of your favorite bands with everybody holding up their phone filming it's it's a constant pain in the ass and a huge distraction and most of the people were there to, for bragging rights or to be disruptive. They were trying to take the show over to them by, ah, oh, sorry, I just, I got a million followers and I like cats. So I started, I said, what is it? Okay, it's a looping video, blah, blah, blah. Fuck it. And it was the first time I had a phone with a, a loop on the back of it. So you have more control over it. I was like, fuck, I could pretty much turn this any way I want. I'm like, I wonder what my asshole's going to do when I put a spotlight on it. And I was going Bro, through. So that video you show me, was that you? Yeah. That was you? Is that bad? No, it was like such a nice stream. Like it was like. Uh, well, that's the thing. That I, can tell any, I, I want to tell anybody that ever meets Jason Rouse whatsoever. If he says, hey, look at this. Yeah, right. Don't fucking do it. All right. All right. Let them figure it out themselves. You can't spill the beans. I, I have to tell people about this. I've seen so many disturbing things. I know. I'm bad. <laughs> I'm bad. Um, yeah. uh, I mean, log fathered. You know, that was like, uh, For years. Scat chats. Oh, Five yeah. years. At least. Maybe ten. I don't know. Every morning. Oh, and, I, and I, to go back, it was around the time I just quit drinking. And uh, my body was going through a horrible detox. I actually got told by my friend's wife during a podcast that I stink to high heavens. Oh, my God. That's Dude, crazy. I smelled like Cool Ranch Doritos <laughs> and boots. I'm always worried about smelling bad. For days but it doesn't matter what you smell like it's you look like you reek all the time <laughs> you just look like a laundry hamper me, me? no i oh. mean Aust <laughs> austin i was about to say like, everybody should, looks like can i work on it everybody in austin looks like they've lost their luggage on a holiday and the only shit they got left is the stuff they wore in the 80s from florida oh it's all coming back you know uh, i know but i was there yeah, so it's like that's it, it, why I'm, I, I'm. Yeah, but I, it looks like you're making fun of me. 
being comparative to a great is the best form of admiration. Sam. No, but you picked all the worst parts of my generation and popularized it in 20s. Yeah, like I, I got bullied for watching anime and now it's mainstream now. Isn't it? Yeah, and I'm like, and I'm like, I'm like all right. Let's play. I got bullied if I didn't jack off to anime. Tentacle porn? It was fine because of like- you I used throw, to get a hard on at a seafood girls. restaurant. Not actual girls. Uh, speaking of natural girls, um, yeah, no, car- Rawlings don't need human rights, I'm just saying. Cartoons. Yeah, I don't know where the eroticism in is in animation. I don't know. I used to make money, like my first, one of my first jobs I ever had. Oh, God, here we go, folks, exclusive. You were hooking where? I was uh, not hooking yet. It was, this was in middle school. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't start doing that until high school. But uh, middle school is whenever uh, I used to, like, one of my first jobs was basically a professional artist. I would draw, like, pornographic images for my friends, and they would give oh. me fucking, like, snacks and fucking. Do you know who Tom from Finland is? No. He's a famous gay uh, cartoonist. And his, there's uh, some documentaries out on this guy, but this guy, all those cartoons that you see and gay, um, it's just buff gay guys, cowboys, muscle, it's all bear, early bear stuff, like, and uh, he became super famous in the gay community from these uh, homoerotic cartoons. Tom from Finland, look it up. Oh my gosh. Yeah. They love telling you about, oh, you know, Tom from Finland. It's very queer. <laughs> it's excessively. Well, it's, it's good drawings, though. It's good very drawings. Good. Very distinct style. Like, what is a good drawing? Anybody who can draw a circle <laughs> can have a good drawing. Well, yeah, I mean, like, I mean, in the sense where you, know, you could tell that you're looking at a, something real gay. You know? It's not like, you know, oh, could this just mean, you know, I don't think it's soul? sexually arousing. Uh, but I don't know, like, <sighs> anything is really sexy. It's like the Archie's know. cartoons to lesbians. <laughs> the what? Archie's cartoons Archie's for lesbians. lesbians. Like Ask that. your sister, go, do you like the Archie's? She goes, oh my God, I love the Archie's. <laughs> they were all gay. Yeah, there's a, uh, they, they make very good entertainers, the gays. They're One of them wore a crown. It wasn't even a crown. It was a tiara. Jughead. You know what they call him Jughead? Because he could fit more cum in his mouth than anybody on cast. That's that's a marketable skill right there. That is the worst flashlight I've ever seen in my life. It's oh a pair God. of pants on a bike rack. Right? Those legs are nothing but rods, bro. Somebody's going to bang that. See, this is another place of my environment. Is Anytime I see someone on a bicycle driving by, instinctually... I'm supposed to throw my belt in the front spokes. <laughs> uh, the further we walk down this trail, the more like, because we started going down to the water, and I thought we we're going to a pier, and then you're gonna. I thought this is gonna be like a thing where you're like, all right, Sonny, just look out to the water, and I shoot you in the back what of the head. They're like, I'll see you sunset. I'll see you sunrise. And That's right. Bang! Son. <laughs> and you just fall face forward into yeah. the water. I turn around, get on my BMX bike, and ride off. And the sun up. Yeah, this is like where they hide bodies. This is like this. Whoa, this whoa, is where they, this is where whoa. They find this is not where they. This is where I. <laughs> oh, well, I'm glad that guy on the bike almost hit us earlier because he, he could at least like identify us. I will kill one day. I can't. I can't wait. I just hope it's not me. You know, or even if it is me, I hope it's just you know it's funny. I'll just put a break into your place, zip tie you around your neck and then pour gas on you and set you on fire while you try and struggle to unafixiate yourself while I have a hard I, you almost called three person pile up I I almost did I don't know I don't think I caused I was in the equation of a uh, pile up. <laughs> but that guy had a baby on the back. Eh, it was a toddler at this point. I never thought that was a good way to commute. Commute. Uh, commute. Commute? Yeah. Commute what? Via bike? Uh, no, I love the bike. 
I don't want any fucking kid. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's a. Bit it's like difficult. walking around with a skin tag. Yeah, you can't just leave your kid in the car. You can leave a fanny pack. Or you leave your bike just hooked to the front of your car or something. No, it's more or less being responsible enough where. I can't trust anybody in cars not to T-bone me at a crosswalk and run over Billy hanging off the back. Uh, now you've just got a box of meat that was a baby seat. Yeah, I've like they, they, I've have seen that's like I can see people get like stabbed and all that shit. And like uh, I but I see videos of like kids getting uh, getting ran over by cars and like it was like I I didn't purposely go. Is that on guys. PBS? Well, I didn't purposely go and look this stuff up. I just walked in on one of my ex-roommates just, like, going in. And he's, like, watching these death films, like, people getting killed and everything. And I'm, like... Beating off, banging his head on the desk, going, where is God? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't know I don't know if he had just came or he was about to, but there was some sexual tension in the room. His name was Justin Came. Oh. Yeah, you know, you know Justin? But, uh... <laughs> this is what my neighborhood looked like, an alleyway. Just an alleyway? Yeah, this is where I would play. We would make ramps and uh throw rocks at everybody yeah well dude like this guy was wa uh, he was like yo check this stuff out and he starts watching videos of like people's kids getting ran over on accident but uh, on the side of the road like it's hard not to avoid it yeah and it's just like it was so shocking to me because like fucking just like thinking about my daughter as well it's like fucking like what an oopsie you just, just people like that you just put your hands on their shoulders and pull them in close to your face and go if you ever cross me, everything that we've watched today, I will drop on your fucking world. I don't think I'm prepared to back up that claim. Trust me, I'll talk you through it over FaceTime. <laughs> we could do a Zoom call where I show and tell you, this guy looks like my buddy's dog. He's so That's cute. What dogs look like. That's cool. He's a little red one. He looks like my friend's dog, Charlie. So you, you like you like dogs pretty much. Love dogs. Cats, I could throw up into this electrical plant all day. Huh. Oh, I love cats. Cats are great. They leave you the fuck alone. Like, well, that, that's what you're looking for in a relationship is you want somebody around. You just don't want them touching you. When yeah. you're dead on the inside, you need you need to be uh, touched on the outside. I know. I, I like being touched, and I'm like, I'm very dog-like in, in personality. It's like... Uh, you shit on the floor when you eat too much bacon? Yeah, and I just, like, I, hum <laughs> I hump stuff whenever I feel, whenever I want to dominate it. <laughs> shit on the floor when I eat. I made me laugh. <laughs> I'm only saying that is because I was at a house party. Look at this picture of Brian Holtzman. What? The last one. <laughs> oh, my Isn't God. Isn't that bang on? <laughs> Yeah, before uh, it's Joe Perez though. Before mustache, we just gotta throw a mustache on that. I'm gonna get someone to retool that so it says Brian Holtz. Uh, this uh, mural. <laughs> oh, you fuck! Old yeah. banana peels. This gravel. Damn it! Yeah, it's the right. first time I wore these shoes, and now I know why. <laughs> on this path. I haven't been broken in yet. They're slipperier than dog shit on a door handle. Oh, there's a picture of me. The fist? The f yeah, that's me. Big old granite fist. Just a big. Just ready to fuck. Dog fist. I've never seen one baseball game here. There's two, three pee wee uh, baseball I got a pee -wee teams. I think all of them are. Yeah, I mean, I don't think it's baseball season right now. Oh. Uh, see, I don't watch sports. I've never got. You, you watch sports. No. Really? No. Good for you. I just know the times that I was like, where I couldn't hang out with Look at the parrots. Sports. Those parrots? Those are parrots. Those fucking parrots? Those are parrots. Some shithead from the pet store. Yeah, they're all around. Th there's a swarm of them in L.A. too. What the fuck? Yeah, they're super loud and super shitty. Look at these. And they're all the same, so they're all rape babies. Damn. So just a bunch of angry, aggressive rape yeah. baby parrot birds. How would you like to be your family's in Hawaii and you got to hang out in Austin in the summer as a parrot? Ah, I hate parrots. They're just like, like, why do you, why would, why would, why would anyone keep birds? You know, like you like the same reason you keep cats. People want to hear chirpity chirps. Yeah. They want a lesser relationship than any cat or da dog owner. Well, it also might be like domestication know, because like we we're inherently we're violent animals ourselves. that want to just rape, murder, drink blood and stuff like that and hunt. Ew. And, uh, Where you know, did you like read you this? Oh well, yeah. The news. 
Yeah. Well, no, I, I I know about my own my own thoughts and stuff like that. You you have to you have to when you wake up in the morning. I usually have homicidal thoughts and like uh, you just everybody put, you drink does. Drink coffee, you do yoga, and those things are gone. And then you just go to sleep and then scat chat, a couple of push-ups, exactly, and a couple of lines of blow. Well, not not so much the blow. But you telling me that doing yoga high on cocaine is a bad idea? Uh, your heart rate's going up when you're trying to relax. Do you want to hear a cocaine yoga story with Tom Cruise's wife? That sounds like a great time. Um, what's her name that had the baby with him? Penelope Cruz? No. After that, um, that's uh, I don't know. Uh, Mini or uh, um, Mini Driver? No, no, Holmes. Uh, what's her name? Um, Katie Holmes. Katie Holmes, yeah. Katie Holmes is in my. I go in. I'm like, okay, I got a month of hot yoga classes, right? Yeah. Oh, you got like a subscription or something? Yeah, I said, fuck it. I'm. This is around my detox time. So I go, fuck it, I'm, I'm going to run in the hills with a weight vest and do hot yoga for 90 minutes, five days a week. And that's when I smelled the worst. My body was just like fish and chips from Europe from 20 years ago. Oh, uh, meth in Norway, pubic hair from Sylvania, tears of, from Sweden. All of it. Just, on a, I was going through... Flash, you didn't talk about nightmares. And you were, you were detoxing off of like everything? Life. Just every, like, and it, but at, before that, where, like, how long were you going for before you were just like. I know I told you I'm almost 50 years old. Yeah. But I'm over 300 years old. Jesus. You ever see the Highlander? Oh, see, so yeah, I was thinking more North, North Feratu. Kind of that. Yeah. But throw a little Gigi Allen in there and a little Count Dracula. A uh, sprinkle of Jim Carrey, a dash of Mike Patton, and then just shoot that shit up with a cocktail of all kinds of drugs. Yeah. You know, first of all, it was like, you know, when you're traveling, you're, a, put you this way, if there was only one guy in Slipknot. <laughs> yeah. Do the math. Yeah, I've seen I've seen the, like videos of you. It's like you know I saw that video of you thrown up on stage where like Tom Green made you throw up or something like that. I I uh, that was actually the first time I'd actually met Tom. Oh wow! Shout out to Tom Green. He just turned fifty yeah. a couple days ago. Um, Tom Green had just signed his deal with MTV. And this is uh, I want to say late '90s, early 2000s, early 2000s, late '90s. Anyway. Tom's making a first live appearance in Canada since MTV's taken off. It's at a place half the size of the Creek and Cave. And when I say half the size, the inside room, that half. In half. And there's about fucking a thousand kids out on the streets. Picture 6th Street with a small theater and uh, 600 or a thousand people out there trying to get into a 250 seater. Oh, wow. That's, that's Tom's good. hosting the show, and because Tom is hosting the show, there's cameras there and industry. Canada doesn't really have these industry nights. We hadn't had a movie star. You know, I think he'd just done Charlie's Angels. Maybe. No, no, he hadn't done that. Anyway, it's a, a short list of favorites, including myself, but knowing Tom and of that generation... A stand-up show was not going to fly during a Tom Green performance at the height of his career. So I wrote a sketch with a friend of mine about a prostitute, male prostitute, that had allergic to semen. And it was an infomercial where he read off a cue card while I stood in a dress with vice grips hanging off my cock, throwing up vegetable beef soup into the front row. Well, he read this monologue under a spotlight. Well, the, the Ipecac and two liters of vegetable beef soup that I drank minutes before the show didn't really get going until the end of the sketch. So you saw the beginning of probably one of the worst nights. A girl went to the hospital 
uh, she collapsed because it was so packed and there was so much puke. And Tom had, you know, milk bags. Like Canada has milk in a bag. I what? Yeah. Do you know? Okay. So Canadian, it's a one liter uh, milk bag that goes in a little thing with a handle. This is very Canadian. You're getting inside information here. Still today. Tom came out with a trash bag full of milk bags and another trash bag full of barbershop hair and another trash bag with a fan. With a fan? Oh, my. Oh. So he's squirting milk into the audience and pouring out hair into a fan that's blowing all over the audience. Jesus. And someone went to the hospital because of this? A girl got up and tried to... So the stage is here. She gets up to try and run to get out of the exit because... Now this hair's blowing, and I'm throwing up into the fan, <laughs> and people are trying to get out. Jesus Panic Christ. Set in. They're screaming. I'll show you the full-length version. It's fucking insane. Legendary night, by the way. Wow. I'm projectile vomiting. Tom takes his fingers, puts them down my throat. I'm throwing up over his hand. Oh. He takes the fingers out of his hand, puts them in his mouth. The place goes fucking bananas. And I fire back up. So now there's just two guys puking into teenagers <laughs> as they scream. My God. All captured. I managed to tr get the video. There was three different videos that I'd cut into a long version narrative of everything that kind of happened that night. And, um, yeah, that was, uh, that was at the Rivoli. Wow. And whose idea was that? Was that, was that yours or Tom's? The, the vomiting prostitute sketch? No. Tom and I had never really even talked until he introduced me. We had simple hellos in the back. He had a big fuss around him because he's this Canadian star on MTV, which was like, you know, that at that time, MTV and their broadcasting and Tom was like the perfect storm. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's, uh, I mean, uh, that's... So, so the, you guys just like came up with the sketch and I was like, hey. No, uh, yeah, Tom wasn't like, a part of the sketch. Tom came out at the end to, to get ready to introduce the next act and clearly read the room and read me from what I just done and says, okay, let's put some more gas in the tank. And we did a remix at the end of the finale of me just puking into the audience as Tom and I are shoulder to shoulder. The vice grips, hang, my cock is hanging down under the dress, Jesus. and my dick is killing me, because it's a clamp, right? That's, and you have two of those motherfuckers on you, right? No, I got one on the head of my dick. Oh, ow. Yeah. Ow, and you don't, you don't have any piercings or anything? No, it's just meat. Jesus. Barely meat. It looks like calamari stomped onto a hot dog. What have you done to yourself? I know. They won't even take me down to the free clinic. They're like, we don't know what that is. You're like Jackie Chan. But you got it all. You got it all, pal. Oh, my God. Yeah, and that's how I, uh, I met my wife. Jesus. So uh, back to the Tom Cruise story, though. Like, yeah, oh, the, the one of so, wife. yeah. So I'm at the going through my detox. Oh, no, that's right. I, I'd fallen off the wagon or something. I think I went and partied and. I uh, I had rocks in the back of my nose that were that were melting during the yoga class. Oh shit! And as I'm I came in late and grabbed my spot. This class is packed. Like there's four inches, maybe between each mat in the room. That made that into a fucking religious experience, I guess. It was totally not to mention it's Hollywood. So now I'm in Hollywood with a bunch of actresses, and I'm wearing a Slayer shirt and and basketball shorts realizing I'm coming up on the shit and in the mirror in front of me to my right Katie Holmes bumping my shoulder no shit and now I'm now I'm just in a weird place so like uh, uh, are you aroused at this time Ralph you or don't know what gets me hard. I'll tell you that right I, now, fella. Because like you seem like the type of person that would like your dick gets stronger on cocaine. Oh, like, my like, dick actually just gets wider and shorter, so it looks like a tuna can. <laughs> it's really weird. <laughs> you ever see the Incredible Hulk? Think of that if the Incredible Hulk was a stomped on pop Mighty can. Mighty Mouse. Um, sometimes the wind changing direction. 
Sometimes it's a lot more than that. Yeah, it was kind of really weird. Uh, I had the same effect happen to me earlier where I'm like, I'm almost 30, and we were standing and we were standing on your um, patio smoking a cigarette, and for some reason, my, my little thing just stands the fuck up. Bro, I, I, don't, I don't know why. It's like, called hope. Yeah, it was like, it was weird. You know, I was like fucking, I'm like, what the fuck is arousing me right now? And I looked at you, and I was like, no. It's probably and, uh, my breath. It stinks of pussy from years past. <laughs> the residue, of, the residue of pussy years past. I, you know, I wear my grills, and uh, I started. I got them originally in early two thousands. I started wearing them. Yeah, I was a, a little, oh, just the two sets. One of them only fit anymore. Yeah. The recent one, but uh, mainly because I had an ex say that she'd leave me if I had ever did that. Did what? Got gold fronts. Well, well, yeah. That's why I'm walking with you. I think uh, you should get some gold fronts, bro. I got gold fronts. Hey, get you a face they, pat. No one, you have a face pat? Because I'm not in a position. Look, at the reason I don't have tattoos below my elbows, I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> it's none of your fucking business. You know? It's like the equivalent, asking you about your tattoos is like somebody looking over your shoulder while you're trying to text message your mom. Yeah. I, I found that was like really, really rude for people to ask people. About That's what, uh, how I see it. You yeah. know, other people look at it as to so make their... what's that tattoo of that wolf on your back? The wolves? Yeah. Um, it's not finished yet. The fucking guy, these, the son of a bitch. The, you know, you see some upcoming artists, right? In sync. Okay, oh, before yeah. they blew up, they were booked to play a bar mitzvah, and they were huge. They had a number one hit, and they're playing some kids' party. Oh, right? Yeah, as soon as you drop in sync, I was like, "Oh, I know what you're talking about, buddy." <laughs> now you're speaking my language. Justin Timberlake, what's oh, yeah. the problem there? I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Uh, fucking just too talented for all for everybody else. Cigarette smoker. He's a cigarette smoker. Yep. That's not that bad. My friend says he he rips him fucking on the on the hard. Oh, he's like a like a heavy. First of all, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's always surprising to find out that like you know movie stars, actors, pop stars, stuff like that actually have like a like a bad habit. I would love to hang out with Justin Timberlake. He's cool. He's like six two. Is he that tall? Yeah. Or he's six feet, I think. Yeah, he's six foot tall. Okay. What a what a great guy. Britney didn't you know? He must. Watch the news and see Britney Spears go through whatever she's going through, even more so now. I guess there's some more allegations or whatever it may be, and go, whoo, you know that ex-girlfriend that you run into and she's with somebody else huh. and you couldn't be more happier for them because yeah. she's a fucking psycho? I, well, you find out like her like whole family's fucking psycho and she's actually the most normal one out of them and like fucking... Uh, then you're just like, yep, I could see them fucking doing this kind of stuff. But you just don't yeah. see that. You take a hard look at anybody's family tree, and you're going to see some cracks in it. Old bird nests full of puke. Children's <laughs> tears. All kinds of, like, fucked up. Yeah, there's, like, people that keep things under their rug. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure my father murdered people. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm not 100% certain, but he might have. Speaking of murdered people, this puke has been baking over here. I've been dying to lick it. This what? Someone, some dog... Puked here. It's a nice fucking stream. I feel like my son has been buried under this tree. Right. Now that guy, where, where are the bodies? Look at this nice little enchanted forest we're walking through. I know, right? Like this is even an even better place to fucking murder somebody. Well, today it is kind of eerily still. It's very, it's chi it's chillier than usual. I mean, it's only it's probably like eighty something degrees, but still, it's fucking chilly. 30 Celsius, I guess. Is that right? Uh, Maybe. I don't know. 27? Yeah, you try to tell me kilometers, and I'm like, I have no idea how far that is. I am not even sure where that what that is either. I have to get out my uh, Google Maps and do the math. Yeah, so they do miles in Canada? I don't know what they do, because as you know, I've never driven a car in my life. So the measurements of transport, uh, signs and lengths, uh, it's all time for me. I don't look at it as how many miles. It's like, well, how long it, would it take it like me? in kilometers or is it in miles? Uh, it's in kilometers. Okay. Yeah. So, like, America is, like, literally the only one who does miles. 
Well, I think, I mean, if I remember correctly, sometime when I remember in school in the 80s, there was like some sort of global changeover for measurements, and the U.S. had gone back. It was something to do with fuel measurements, oh. liters and gallons, you know. Well, a lot of our measurements are in like inches, feet, stuff like that. It's like fucking. Yeah, we were all on the same page there. And when I say we all, anybody who was part of that organization of amalgamizing uh, the measuring tools of society, you're literally changing clocks to suit and accommodate the rich and famous. That's quite, in, quite, quite interesting. Oh, you know, I just, I I just looked at that shit brick house of an old dude that just fucking ran past us. I was like, what the fuck? Yeah, that, is that was the guy shredded? Yeah, you looked like that dude that you were showing me that, uh, that you went to your, that, that uh, show where you were... Um, Almost killed? No, with the with the lady death that lady. was you know, the deaf lady that came on stage. I thought he was coming to kill me. He, what, did, was he that was he that big? No. He was much bigger, right? Dude, that guy's like, that guy's the leg of Robbie. Jeez. Yeah, he's showing me pictures of this dude, and I'm like, oh my oh, god, yeah. it's like this big fucking shit brick house, and he was in uh, he was in Prometheus, Prometheus right? yeah. yeah, bunch of movies. I think he was this six arm guy in Guru, uh, uh, Mortal Kombat. Oh, for real. Um, yeah, was, a bunch of stuff, but yeah, yeah when you're a giant beast, like look at the mountain of Game of Thrones. Was that guy seven foot something? Yeah, and you see his little ass wife, and you're like, good god, lady. Yeah, what is that? He, get, he gives her a fucking heart palpitation every time he thrusts. Yeah, but maybe look at maybe the guy's got a fucking super small hog, and she knows how to keep his secret. Yeah, or maybe it's super small for someone his size, but it's just regular for like. No, let's let's. Just demasculize, demasculize, demasculize the mountain. Unmasculate. You trying to tear down the mountain, bro? I'm trying to tear down the mountain. You trying to? You're the trying idea to of him mountain. having a thumb for a piss hole makes me <laughs> like a, a well thumb, for a thumb-sized piss hole. Yeah. Oh. God. All urethra Dude, and no balls. There's this porn star that like uh, that all of them. Do. OG Mudbone. This big, this is a fucking dude. He had a, I don't know if it's a prosthetic dick or whatever. Mudbone? OG Mudbone. He was, was he a gay porn guy? He, no, he had like a fucking, no, he was just banging these chicks with this huge ass fucking hand, cock. First of all, you go on Google and you just type in world's biggest dicks. My picture is going to come up first, but it's just a picture of my face. <laughs> the other photos are actually going to be unearthly size hammers, but look at once you everybody knows you got a big dick, you're like a guy with a half a cape. Yeah. You're a superhero, but you can't get off the ground. That's always the best thing of like no, like whenever you sleep with somebody who has like a really good friends group of really hot women, and then you break up, and then they all start talking to you. It's like, oh, so you found out I got a big penis. That's fucking or they're just hate your girlfriend so much that they're willing to that is also good too like yeah, whatever you could that's a cocktail right there of just fucking no pun pussy. intended cocktail maybe that's <laughs> where it came from maybe. it's like a, lo a lie about a dick that's a cocktail yeah it's a, it's a it's a fabricated story about a penis yeah or a rooster <laughs> maybe a like cocktail like always talking about like hey my rooster's so big it's so big it's bigger than yours and it's like oh pull it out or is this just a tail I was like, oh, are you just like, doing a cocktail right now? I need a drink about this. What do we call it? It looks about like a young Tim Dillon. Young Tim Dillon. Yeah. yeah. Fucking, uh, he does. Tim Dillon looks busted. <laughs> the guy has like, like uh, the guy we just saw has a whole lot of gray hair. Tim Dillon is a prestigious male, has a sh like the epitome of physicality that anybody could achieve. Have you ever have you have you seen him lately? He's the American Dream. Yeah, he's perfect, perfect condition. Fantastic. That's optimal. Speaking efficiency. of perfect condition, a lady told me to go fuck myself up here. Did you comply? Uh, no, I had the camera running, so it made a, a nice little funny. I laughed because uh, me to turn around and to address that. Oh, where they like drove rode, rode past you on the bikes? Yeah. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I um. I instinctually I go to theater mode and make a huge fucking fiasco out of the lady, some cunt on a bike that she clearly couldn't handle because right, right she's so out of shape. What a pig! 
Oh, look at that, the ducks. There's the porch right down there. Kind of reminds me of the, uh, remember the movie The Mask, when Jim finds the mask? Yeah, and it's like right down there. Uh, he, didn't he find it in a chest, or do you think he found it? You know what? I don't know any of the names of the characters that Jim Carrey played, with the exception of Man on the Moon. That's interesting. Uh, no, I can't either. I, I can't even remember. I can't remember any of his uh, names of his characters whatsoever. It's always just Jim Carrey. Me. The whole. Yeah. It's crazy when it doesn't matter what the guy's, as long as Jim's doing what he's done. Uh, I like this dramatic stuff, but he's like, you know, the uh, number 23, that was pretty cool. And yeah. Then, uh, I really love Sunshine and Spotless Mind. Cable Guy. Okay, uh, okay, uh, I don't think I've seen that one. What? Yeah, With Ben Stiller? One. Probably. I don't Huge know. flop. Was it? Huge flop. It's about anything that has Cable Guy. One of his best movies. Flop. Okay, first of all, you know Beastie Boys? Yeah. They put out an album called Paul's Boutique. Maybe one of their best. Maybe their best album. Paul's Boutique. Flopped. Okay. He puts out this role that's so offbeat. Cable Guy with Ben Stiller. You know, you're like, how perfect can that be? It's like David Spade and Chris Farley. Oh, wow. Uh, it's a good match. It tanks. People bring it up as one of his, their favorite roles, characters. That is interesting how that happens because have you ever seen the Boondock Saints? Yes. They fucking, uh, they released it in theaters originally, uh, but it didn't get a any sort of following. And it wasn't until it released the DVD that it got fucking huge sales. Well, you know why. Why's that? Harvey Weinstein crushed the project. Oh. Yeah. Well, he, he was pretty good at thrusting, from what I hear. Harvey blacklisted those guys, and that's why it never came out. Uh, they had Boondock Saints 2. Exactly. Uh, it came out, and then they were like, Norman Reedus was talking about, like, whenever Walking Dead was done, like, they were talking about doing an actual series, like a Boondock Saints series, uh, where, uh, I think it's like, you see them after prison or something like that, and Norman Reedus said, like, he can't do two shows at once. Like doing The Walking Dead and doing Boondock Saints. Uh, that's terrible. I wish I had two TV show problems. Right? Oh man, that would, that would, that would be that would be a great problem to have. You know, like oh, what accounts am I going to keep my money in this day? Uh, right. It's not even about the money. It's about opportunity. Like you said, uh, Boondock Saints came out. A lot of people went into debt, millions of dollars to do that, and it went nowhere. Well, whoever owned it decade later there's the money mm -hmm. did it his way but he lived long enough to see the fruits of their labor yeah. and on that note ladies and gentlemen thanks for being on the show Sonny. Oh I fucking loved it Jason Rouse thank you so uh, much. Just walking around one of my favorite spots in Austin and uh, big shows coming up in the fall folks big shows big shows Go to JasonRouse.com for all your shit. Where can people find you? Uh, you can find me on Instagram at Sunny D Carlin. You'll know, you'll see me with my glasses and my smiling face. You can find me on Facebook at Sunny Carlin. You can search YouTube and stuff like that. You might find incriminating photos. Uh, let me know if you do find them. You can always email me at SunnyDCarlin at gmail.com. If you want to say anything to me whatsoever, please don't send me Boomer's asshole anymore. Jason's already got that covered. Uh, thank you very much. I All right, you. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna jump off this bridge. Ah! He's just a roustabout, shifting from town to town. No job can hold him down.